Hello to everyone. In this podcast, I will give you some information on dermoscopy for skin of color. First of all, we all know that dermoscopy has changed our lives in terms of diagnostic power as it allows us to appreciate findings not visible to the naked eye. This is valid for inflammatory conditions and tumoral conditions. Till now, many, many papers on this topic have been published in the literature, but there is a big limitation that just less than 1% of the papers on dermoscopy deal with skin of color. This is a big limitation because the same condition may display different findings according to the skin phototype. As you can see here, this is valid for inflammatory conditions, but also for tumoral conditions. These differences are due to several reasons. First of all, in darker phototypes, we have a darker background, which may mask underlying structures, especially vessels. And moreover, in skin of color, we have specific skin reaction patterns, which are less commonly seen in Caucasians and in fair skin. Namely, a higher tendency to pigment lability, which is responsible for the uh, presence of pigmented structures on dermoscopy, and follicular and sclerotic reactions, which are responsible for specific dermoscopic findings. And besides, there are some dermatoses which are predominantly or exclusively seen in darker phototypes. In this paper, done on behalf of the International Dermoscopy Society, we tried to address uh, the dermoscopic features of many inflammatory conditions. Of course, I cannot go through all of these conditions, and I will focus on the three groups of conditions which are more common in daily clinical practice and are more challenging for a, from a diagnostic point of view, which are facially pigmented dermatosis, hypopigmented dermatosis, and papillus squamous dermatosis. Let's start with facial pigmented dermatosis. As you can see, from a clinical point of view, it may be very difficult to make a diagnosis and even to make a suspicion. Let's see the demoscopic clues of these conditions. We can say that from a demoscopic point of view, we can divide facial pigmented dermatosis into three groups. First of all, there are those conditions characterized by dots. First, we have ashy dermatosis, in which we have uh, gray and blue dots, which are arranged in a perifollicular pattern. In the center, you can see a case of lacking pigmentosis, in which we see brown dots arranged still in a perifollicular pattern. And then we have real melanosis, which is a pigmented contact dermatitis, in which the clue is the presence of intrafollicular brown dots which are due to the presence of a pigment leakage through the follicle. Of course, we may also have uh, brown-gray dots arranged in a perifollicular pattern, but the presence of intrafollicular brown dots is quite specific for real melanosis. The second group uh, includes those dermatoses characterized by brown structureless areas with osteosparing, namely pseudo network, in this group, we have melasma and nevus sovata. We can see we can say that in melasma we have a more homogeneous uh, areas. In nevus sovata, these areas are a bit more inhomogeneous, and we may also appreciate sometimes um, osteal obliteration. The third group of condition includes exogenous sochronosis and is characterized by the presence of brown-gray circles and semicircles. Now let's come back to our two patients. Uh, we said that from a clinical point of view, uh, it is not easy to make a diagnosis, but dermoscopy may be helpful. In this case, we have gray dots arranged in a perifollicular pattern. So the diagnosis here is ashy dermatosis. The second case, still, clinical diagnosis is a bit challenging, but dermoscopy is helpful because 
we have intrafollicular brown dots. Of course, we also have brown dots arranged in a perifollicular pattern, but the presence of intrafollicular brown dots is quite specific for real melanosis, pigmented contact dermatitis. Second group of conditions uh, that I would like to address includes hypopigmented dermatosis. As you can see, even in this group of condition, clinical diagnosis in darker phototypes may be quite challenging. Let's see the demoscopic clues of these conditions. Demoscopic clues include uh, demoscopic findings which are quite specific for that condition, according to the study I showed you before. So in vitiligo, the uh, main demoscopic clues include diffuse bright white areas with very sharp margins and white hairs. White hairs are not always present in vitiligo, but when they are present, they are quite specific for vitiligo. In idiopathic gutted hypomelanosis, we have these peripheral white projections, which are quite specific for this condition, and sometimes we may also appreciate complete periacrine brown pigmentation or circles. In achromic pityriasis versicular, we have wide scales in skin furrows uh, due to the fact that the fungus has a tropism for more humid areas, so skin furrows. We may also see perifollicular white scales and perifollicular white color uh, due to the tropism of the fungus for the follicle. In Pt. Reza's alba, we have a diffused white area with blurred margins, and sometimes we, we may also appreciate periacrine, incomplete periacrine brown pigmentation of semicircles, but this finding is quite difficult to appreciate. Hypopigmented leprosy is mainly characterized by reduced appendages, so uh, reduced follicles, hairs, and sweat glands. So we have a reduction of uh, the ostia of the sweat glands on dermoscopy. And finally, in nevus depigmentosis, the main demoscopic clue is the presence of intralesional brown reticular lines. Let's come back to our two cases. Let's see dermoscopy. In this case, we just have ill-defined dull white areas. That's it. We do not have any other demoscopic clue. So the diagnosis is PT rises alba. In the second case, we still have um, ill-defined uh, white areas, but most importantly, we have a, redu a reduction of skin appendages, so has an acrinostia. So the diagnosis here is hypopigmented leprosy. This is the last group of conditions I would like to address, papillosquamous dermatosis. Still, you can see that sometimes the differential diagnosis may be quite tricky. Let's see the demoscopic clues. So, demoscopic findings highly specific for those conditions. In Lacan planus, we have the Wickham stria. Differently from Caucasians, in dark skin, uh, Wickham stria are more bluish and usually we do not see any vessel. In psoriasis, we have diffuse white scales and we have uh, dotted vessels distributed in a uniform way. Psoriasis is one of the few conditions that may display vessels under dermoscopy in darker phototypes because in psoriasis, we have acanthosis on histology which, is, uh, which makes the background lighter, whiter, so we can appreciate vessels. In Pityrasus rosea, similarly to Caucasians and fair skin, we have a peripheral whiting, whitish scaling with a jagged inner free edge. In dermatitis, we have yellow scalar crusts, but in dark skin, we also have brown scales and crusts because we have spongiosis, so serum exervasation, but we also have melanin expolation that uh, makes the skills and crusts brown. 
We also have fabric fibers, which are quite characteristic for dermatitis. In Peter Rice's Life and Artist Chronica, we mainly have this peripheral white scaling with a smooth inner free edge, and sometimes we also have a central mica like scale. In Pereira nodularis, which is another condition that in skin of color may appear um, uh, verrucous, scaly, uh, we have from a demoscopic point of view the so called Watson bust pattern, which is typified by the presence of peripheral radiating white lines. So let's come back to our two cases. Let's see the demoscopic features. We can appreciate that in this case, we mainly have peripheral white scales with a jagged inner free edge. Of course, we also have brown dots, but this is not specific for uh, any mm, papillus squamous condition. So the diagnosis here was pityriasis rosea. The second case, I think that dermoscope is very clear cut. We have white scales, but most importantly, we have uniform dotted vessels. So the diagnosis here was psoriasis. So this is the end of my podcast. I hope you will find it helpful for your daily clinical practice. And with this, uh, I thank you very much for listening.